There you go. Hi everybody, how you all doing? Did you all have a lovely bank holiday weekend? Weather was beautiful, well it was cold yesterday but it was beautiful wasn't it, Friday and Saturday. Sat in the garden for a little bit, did some lots of sewing mind as well but um, but yeah it was, uh, it was lovely wasn't it, it was nice to have a few days off so uh, yeah we uh, definitely needed it as well. <laughs> Although I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself today because I've managed to twig my back and I'm walking around like a proper old crony today. <laughs> can't bend down I'm having to shout the kids and shout Sarah to pick stuff up in the shop for me because I can't bend so but it'll be fine it'll be fine how's everyone doing who's there anybody coming online we got Jenny, Sean, Linda, Marilyn so far hi everybody hello thank you for joining us um so we've got um we'll give everybody just a couple of minutes so we've got a couple of little um announcements first I've got the prize draw from the challenge post to pick um, and then we're going to talk through the raffle as well, and then we're going to do this this buzz saw block. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, what have you been up to? Anybody up to anything nice? What did you get up to at the weekend? So, anything exciting? I spent far too much money in Marks and Spencer's food hall. I only went down to pick up a pick up an order, and then got sucked in to go around the food hall. Spent way too much money on lots of yummy yummy things, which is not good because I really need to be eating less. <laughs> I'm getting a haircut. I've got to get a haircut soon. Uh, and my boys, you should see the state of some of their hair. They're like, you know, like cousin it at the moment. It's all over the place. So, what's everyone up to? Uh, Jenny said too much partying. Ah, oh, cool. Did you do a VE party? VE day party? Yeah, anything else? Anything uh, else there? Everyone's just saying hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Right, okay. I think that's probably enough to uh, get you going. So, I'm going to put my cup of tea out of the way. So, um, we said we'd draw the, the prize draw today for the challenge post, the one about free motion quilting, uh, free motion embroidery, sorry. Um, there were some beautiful posts, really, really lovely things. Um, I particularly loved Sally's cow. I thought that was amazing. Really, really, I just loved that whole, whole idea of that. It was fabulous. Um, and what else was there? Um, we saw some lovely cards. In fact, everybody had a really, I loved Linda's bee. I thought that was really cute. Sandra's bag with all the little um, beach huts on it that was fab too so yeah well done everybody well done for having a little go it's a really nice fun little method and uh, and it was lovely to see all your stuff see all your greetings cards I know Maria did some for his daughter's birthday and stuff so um, so yeah there were, um, there were 38 comments so lots and lots of comments um, we put everybody's names in the in the hat or rather fabric basket so um, actually while, I'm, while I've got that well you can see that we're doing this on the remember we did um, a couple of weeks ago on Tuesday night um, at 7 p.m. on the craft shows website uh, Facebook page we're doing another live and we're going to be making these one hour fabric baskets and there's three sizes you can do okay so the pattern includes all of them so I'm gonna be demoing that but I'm gonna give them a give it a good shake mix them all up and then pass it over to Drew to pick one okay go. Drew who's is it who's the lucky winner Ah, oh, Sandra Hatton. Well done. So you've won the whole set of our applique templates, which are brilliant for working with um, with the free motion embroidery. Do you remember like we did the duck? So congratulations, Sandra. Those are coming to you. Fabulous. Right, so that was the first little thing. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about as well was um, we've got a new Stir Crazy raffle going. Um, I only launched it on Thursday, I think it was. It was on the website. We've only got seven places left on it already they sold absolutely crazily over the weekend so there's seven spots left you have to do it through the website okay i can't take phone orders for this one so you need to go to the website and do it it's five pound and it's a humongous 200 pound prize um you saw the prize we did last time i did a little demo i've got it all here in a bag but there's some amazing products there okay well you know 200 pounds worth of stuff it's five pound to go there's seven spaces left so if you want to have a go grab one quickly okay so i'm going to just tuck that under there safe out of the way <laughs> um so yeah that's it i think i think that's all my announcements sean will have put a post out this morning um which i'll go through later with what we're going to be doing this week so onto the block onto the sewing uh okay so i'm going to be perfectly honest this block gave me hell <laughs> Not that it's difficult to do because it's not. Um, so this block naturally, um, all the patterns out there, because it's quite a really traditional block, the buzzsaw block. But um, 
just realised I've got a couple of threads left. I'm just chopping those off. Um, it naturally wants to be either an eight and a half inch block or a 16 and a half inch block, which doesn't fit into your isolation quilts. So I had to do a ridiculous amount of maths um, and I've worked it all out. And it's actually really simple now, but it didn't have to give me hell. So this is a buzzsaw block, okay? And the whole idea is it looks kind of like, you know, a buzzsaw, okay? It's a lot more, it's a lot easier than it looks, okay? It looks quite like there's gonna be lots and lots of cutting and, and everything, but it's really not, okay? You can either do it in one color like this, or I'm gonna show you how to do it in two colors, okay? So um, the pattern is available on the website that I'll put that on this afternoon. It's ready to go as soon as we're finished here, I'll, I'll publish it. Um, and the instructions have both for a single color one and a double color one, okay? So what you're gonna need for this is, oh, just when I'm sorting this out, any questions there, Drew? Anybody commenting? Uh, uh, Jane said, just joined in my lunch. Uh, cool. Uh, Linda says hello. Hi guys. Uh, Sandra said, wow, thank you very much. Good choice, Drew. <laughs> it was uh, a blind thing. He just randomly put, but well done, Sandra. Congratulations. We'll Sean get said there's, there's only six you. left on the raffle. Oh, there's only six now. Oh, cool. Oh, brilliant. Fab. Um, so what you're going to need for this block is you're going to need two seven inch squares of your background fabric, whatever that may be. Okay. And if you're going to do it in one colour, okay, you need two seven inch squares of that colour. But I'm going to do this one in two so you can see the difference, okay? So I've got a seven inch square in two different fabrics. And then you need four two inch by six and a half inch rectangles, okay? So what we're going to do, so the first bit, in fact, the whole thing is very easy. It was just the maths really got to me because I had to scale it down and and all sorts to get it to a 12 and a half because it doesn't naturally want to be a 12 and a half this block so I'm going to put right sides together one of your coloured fabrics with your one of your background fabrics like that and let me just grab a excuse me I'm a bit of a crock today it's taking me a bit to get up and down which is not gonna be fun when I'm scooting it <laughs> in between and I can grab a ruler and we're just going to make a half square triangle to start with. Now, you guys have all done this before, but we'll just go through that little step first. So I'm going to go down like that, and we're going to sew quarter an inch either side. All right, so we're going to scoot over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to have to get up and do this today because I can't scoot. <laughs> and I'm just going to, oh, sorry, I've just realised I've got the wrong foot on. Let me just pop a quarter inch foot on. There we go. So, uh, quarter an inch down both sides. And while I'm doing that, anybody commenting? Anybody there, Drew? Uh, Linda Head said, good job, you're a clever girl. Oh, I tell you what, my, my poor mat, my poor brain was addled. There were bits of paper all over the place because I was having to, it, was, it doesn't naturally go down to a 12 and a half, but we got there in the end. So, uh, but yes, it, it did. Uh, the things I do for you guys, eh? <laughs> Jenny said to bring one, uh, to get one of the boys to bring their chairs down. Oh yeah, I'm gonna need it. It's that side. I'm all right up and down in. It's the sideways movement. I I, I think it's just a bit touchy sciatica or something. But yeah, I've been feeling it today. It's not been good. <laughs> just getting old. That's what it is. Old, old and old and old crock now. <laughs> okay, and then we're just gonna cut up. Let me just move all this, these bits out of the way. We're gonna cut up that line to do two half square triangles which you guys are all more than capable of doing now there we go hang on let me move my cup of tea as well I'm not very organized today am i <laughs> so you want to make sure as well that you're ironing it ironing it ironing it that didn't sound odd ironing it towards the darker fabric the seam okay so be a jedi go to the dark side like that so there's one and there's another like that okay now this next little step is really important okay i know some of you hate squaring up but you really really it will not work if you don't square this up at this point okay the blocks just don't go together so we need to square this up to six and a half inches exactly all right so i'm going to start i have to stand up for this a second and grab my ruler so drew's gonna have to stand with me 
So I'm just going to square this one up very quickly to oh, get the, room, the right way round to six and a half. So I'm going to put my 45 degree line like that. You right, Drew? Yeah, just the thing just has to move itself. Ugh. <laughs> and take top and bottom off and again you can see how little that is but it really will make a difference with this block you really do need it to be um, squared up okay and then I can do my six and a half by six and a half and it's a tiny widgy bit but I'm going to do that and I'm just going to do the other one quickly as well wherever I put it there it is so you would make the other one into uh, half square triangles as well okay because you would make like four quarters to this block so there we go, so there's my six and a half, six and a half, like that. And again, just flip it round and do the same. Okay. There we go, like that. Right, we're gonna cut these one at a time. You would do all four um, half square triangles. Let's move all those bits out of the way. Um, but we're gonna cut these one at a time. Now, we're gonna be cutting one in five eighths okay which i know is a bit of a random figure but it this that's how this block works because of getting it to the right size for your isolation quilts so get a ruler that you can really see the one in five you know on your ruler mark in fact i mean if you if you're worried about it put a little line use a little sharpie or something and put a little line where it says one in five eighths so let me show you where one in five eighths is so this is my one inch line one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters. My one and five eighths is this little, can you see this little line here in between my half and three quarter line, okay? And that's what we're cutting. And I know it seems like an eighth of an inch is not gonna make a difference, but it really does with this block. So I'm lining up my one and five eighths all the way down, okay? So let me just do that so you guys can really hopefully you can see that and i'm going to cut this block up into four one in five eight strips so one like that and you want to keep them in the right order okay it's quite important that you do find that one in five eighths again so i've got one and a half and one and three quarters and it's right slap bang in the middle all of your quilting rulers will have these little eighth in eight inch eighth in of an inch Oh, that's really hard to say. Eighth of an inch markings. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do this all the way through. Like that. Like that. Okay, so you should end up with four strips that look like that. Okay. You're then going to turn them upside down. So you're going to do a full 180. So it's going to go like that. I'm going to turn this one top to bottom, turn this one top to bottom, and this one top to bottom. And can you see now how you've got this sort of zigzag going on? Okay, so then we're going to stitch that one to that one, and this one to this one, and then you're going to stitch them together. All right, so I'm going to take them to the sewing machine. So I'm going to put that one on top of there, and I find because these must be kept in the right order. As I've said before, if you grab a pin, and again, I know I'm not a pinner, but if I put a pin on the side that I want to sew, when I take them to the sewing machine, I know that I'm sewing this side. So I'm going to put that one to that one, like that. Get them right together. And then put a pin on this side. And I'm going to sew those two together. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. There we go. Right, while I'm just, and um, again, all quarter of an inch seam lamps as normal. While I'm uh, sewing these down, any comments there, Drew? Uh, Diana said, could you please have the details for the fabric basket where and when it's his broadcast? Sorry, to that. Sorry, <coughs> sorry that you have to repeat your directions. That's all right, lovely. It's on, um, if you go to Facebook and look for, um, in the search bar, go to the craft shows. It's um, ICHF. Um, which is the big, you know, they do the big one at the NEC in November and they do lots of shows all over. It's their Facebook page. It's just the craft shows. Um, and it's on tomorrow at 7pm. I'll be on live then. But we will, um, we will put it onto our YouTube channel afterwards, obviously after it's been filmed. 
I will put it onto our YouTube channel and the written directions, the pattern will be, um, and it's the patterns for three sizes. So there's a large, the medium one that you saw and then a little one. That will be on our website after tomorrow as well, okay? Hang on, sorry, that went wonky because I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> And don't stab yourself with the pin either. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Any other comments there, Drew? Uh, Jenny said, "Be a stormtrooper to uh, to go to the dark side." Jedi's use the force. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, maybe you need to be a Sith Lord, don't you? Not a not a Jedi. <laughs> I don't know. It's one of those things I've always said. <laughs> go be a Jedi. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna iron these out. Okay. And you want to iron them all the same way. So I'm gonna iron them each time towards the smaller, can you see the smaller bit, like that, okay, and then again iron this one out towards the smaller bit, oh, get my fingers in there, like that, there we go, okay, and then I'm going to iron and sew these two together, so I want to put them back together like that, so I'm making this like lovely zigzag pattern, and then put those together like that. I'm going to stitch down there. Okay, there we go. So again, just a quarter of an inch, and you know, be careful with this because it does make a difference. All right. Mm, so there's only three left on the raffle. Oh, girls! I might be able to pull it, uh, draw it tomorrow. So yeah, there's only three left, ladies. So if you do want to have a go, go for it because, uh, and then we'll draw it tomorrow if they all go. Somebody be a lucky winner. <laughs> there we go. to go the same way as well so I want that to go that way. Andy Griffiths says hello just got here what block are we doing today? Today it's called the buzzsaw block okay um, so it's um, it, I've had to scale it down for 12 and a half because it normally comes out a lot bigger okay so I'm going to go through it again in a second so you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that all right and then what have I done with it oh there they are <laughs> we want to add on one of our two by six and a halves onto this side okay can you sit actually let me do it that way for you okay so you can sit up the right way up okay so you want to put it on it's the background fabric on the bit that's the longest bit of the background fabric so not this side over here okay so that's going to go on like that so i'm going to do that now and then what i'll do is i will cut up this one to show you the cutting again because like i said even though it's it's simple cut cutting it is an odd measurement so Sorry, I <laughs> sat down way too quickly there, my back went... <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> so that's the little quarter block now done, okay? And you can see it's quite easy to put together. It was just that you've got to be careful with those measurements, all right? So there's your block, and you want to square this up now to six and a half inches, okay? So I'm going to take it back over here. And again, because we're going to be putting four of these together, you do want to just double check these, okay? So, oh, do you know what? I think that's actually come out. I don't even need to square it. It's the tiny weeniest bit up there, which stretched slightly. That's it. It's actually come out dead on. That doesn't happen normally. <laughs> it's come on dead on. Okay, so that's the first bit of the block done. That's your, your quarter, okay? So I'm going to go through how to cut this one again, all right? In fact, actually, I'll do it on the other colour. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll do it on the other colour so you can see what it looks like when I put two together, okay? So we're going to go... Sorry, and I know I'm standing a lot today rather than sitting, but that's just because of my silly back. I'm struggling to uh, to stay sat and, and stretch to do this today. <laughs> Here we go. So we're going to go quarter of an inch either side. making Drew work for it today, aren't I? <laughs> up and down, up and down. So we're going to go a quarter of an inch either side, just like you would normally with a half square triangle. Okay, any comments there, Drew, while I'm doing these bits? Mm. Sorry, I was stuck in my throat. Um, Christine said, will you be e emailing the cutting uh, requirements of the Zoom class on Saturday, please? Yes, they are, everything will go out on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, um, anybody who's who's paid to join the Zoom class on Saturday, on Wednesday you'll get your cutting instructions and your written instructions and 
the link for the Zoom class, okay? So that'll go out Wednesday afternoon after the one o'clock. Okay. So there we go. So that's my two, the two seven inch squares done so that you can cut them up. Let me just move that matrix cutter out of the way and then just cut them up again like this. I won't do both of them, I'll just do the one for now for you, okay? And then like I said, just towards the darker side. There we go. And then we're going to cut this up, okay? So, I'm going to do it facing... Uh, I can't, no, I can't because I'll be cutting on the wrong side. So when you're cutting it, always make sure that the coloured square... So this is facing me. So... You, I'll turn it before I cut it, okay? So when you're cutting them, I don't know if I said that when I did this one, you always want this to be in the bottom left, uh, bottom right corner. So whatever colour you're using, you want your background this side, so that's facing you guys, all right? I'm going to have to turn it towards me because of, of the actual cutting. I can't, because they're unusual si uh, sizes, I can't cut it upside down. So I'm just going to square that one up because you've got to square it up for till six and a half, like that. There we go, and then, and I know I'm repeating this, but I think it because it's a slightly unusual cutting, I think it's worth just repeating it so you guys have, have got me twice waffling on. <laughs> okay, and then, so I want it in the bottom right foot towards me, okay, so if it's towards you. And then, do you remember I said it's one in five eighths, so that's between the half inch and the quarter, uh, three quarters of an inch line up that line those little dots which is my five eighths line and then go up that way and tracy jones asked is the saturday class full it is yeah the saturday class is full at the moment but if it goes okay and people want us to we will do another one okay um it looks like we're going to be you know in lockdown for at least till the end of may so we will put some more on okay so if ever if people want us to if there's another eight you know six or eight people that want to do it i'm happy to do it again but um let's just get saturdays out of the way <laughs> we'll get saturdays out of the way just to check that the technology and everything works as it should and that people can see see what's happening and then if people want us to do it again we will absolutely pop another one on okay so and then what i'm do you remember what i did then was turned go from bottom to top like that on each of them and then we're going to stitch them together so i'm going to sew that one to that one and that one to that one okay so i'm going to do that now and just put this one together just i just want you to be able to see what the two colors look like okay so any questions there drew anything going on little things tracy's question no that's about it no no comments uh, janice said i got got back Wait, back got my raffle. Oh, you've you managed to get yeah. a raffle uh, entry. Brilliant. Yeah, there's not many left, ladies. I think Sean said there was three left. So um, there were, were seven this morning. So, yeah, three left now. So uh, go for it. If you fancy winning £200 worth of stuff, it's £5. Um, £5 an entry. There we go. Uh, Liz asks, what size are the white background strips sewn on at the The ones end that we sew on at the end, the they're two inch by six and a half, okay? But like I said, the, the written instructions are available on the website, two pound like all the blocks are, um, and I can, I'll email it out to you, okay? So, that's the first one. You've got to be kind of gentle with your pressing as well, because they're quite narrow strips, so you don't want to... Uh, Overpress them, set your seam, and then just gently roll out on that one. Try and tease it into place rather than you know. <laughs> and then I'm going to sew that one to that one. There we go. So just while I'm sewing this together, I'll just go through what we're doing this week. So tomorrow we're going to be doing some crochet, and I'm going to be showing you a crisscross stitch, which gives a really nice sort of textured, looks like a little little cross on it um, and then uh, and also a ribbon effect as well so you can get like a fake rib um, 
and then on Wednesday we are doing a the block of the week and that's we're going to do a trip around the world one um, so I'm going to do that one so that I imagine you've all got lots of little pieces left from all these blocks so I've done it so we're going to be using up lots of little little pieces you'll be able to make it quite scrappy if you want to but you don't have to um, and then Thursday Sarah is going to do Dave the Dash Hound which is actually I've got one here I've got one here I'll show you that she made me ages ago two seconds later let me just grab him Ooh. so this is Dave the Dash Hound okay so Sarah made me this one ages ago and he's brilliant you can use him as a pin cushion sorry I'll sit down you can use him as a pin cushion just as an ornament as a soft toy you could fill him with sand and he'd be a nice little doorstop as well okay so she's going to do Dave the Dash Hound on Thursday uh, Friday we've got what have we got on Friday I have completely forgotten I can't find it can't for the oh magic binding no no it's magic binding so I'm going to show you do a bit of a tutorial on binding so I'm going to show you normal binding how I would do it with the corners which I know we've done before but it's a nice refresher but I'm also going to show you how to do magic binding which is all done on the machine and it's a really nice method and it gives this really like lovely little like fake piping on it faux piping and then Saturday Sarah's going to be back on on Saturday because I've got the zoom class and she's going to take you through Daphne and show you how to use Daphne and some new products and all that we've got coming in. So that's that bit like that. And then we're going to pop one of these spare rectangles onto this bit here, the bit that's got the most background. Okay. Jenny asked, have you ever found the Dave that disappeared? No, <laughs> no, no, he got sold, bless him. And no, we never got him back. <laughs> but never mind. It's a long time ago now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, last little bit. Got distracted, didn't I? Heather Talk said, uh, sorry, did you say two inch or two and a half inches by six and a half? Two, two inch. It's a two inch piece, okay? And then, oh, sorry, so I'm going to have to stand up again, ladies, to do this. Which means Drew's got to get up as well. <laughs> and then I'm going to just square this up to six and a half. Andy Griffith says she's got another voucher there uh, for the raffle. Lovely. No problem. I will... Uh, Get all that, that's literally just, do you know what, that's come out. Well, that never happens. Twice in a row, perfect sizes. All I'm doing is just cutting off the, the threads. Brilliant. So what you would do then is you'd make all four, okay? So you would do, you know, do exactly this with your other two half square triangles. So you've made four and you rotate them, okay? So you can you see they would go like this and like this and then I'd rotate again there and again there, which is how you end up with... The bus saw block okay like that so you can see I've rotated the same block round and then that's it done that's your 12 and a half inch block so lots of little things I'm gonna sit down again sorry ladies uh, sorry groups down you go oh. okay so you can make them in solid blocks like this if you were gonna do them in several colors okay you could make them in solid blocks like that but there's nothing stopping you swapping these over okay so when you cut them you could do like um one two or one in three on this one and two in four from this one okay so there's lots of variations you can do lots of things you could play with just as long as you remember to keep them in the right order you know this 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 uh, what descending order <laughs> put my teeth back in there's lots and lots of ways you could you can play with it okay so you could um Where's the half square triangles? Yeah. So you could do it rather than solid blocks like that. You could alternate. If you wanted to, if you're going to make more than one block, you could do like four or five, four colours. So if you made four of these, obviously you'd have four spare. You could then do each one in a different colour. Okay. As long as you kind of, you know, play, keep them in that order. Okay. Um, so hopefully that all made sense. Does anybody want me to go through any of this again? Is anybody all right with it? How are you doing? Um, Jenny said, love this blog. Looks so much harder than it is. Yeah, it really does. It looks like you've spent hours and hours doing lots of pieces. But the nice thing about this, I want, hopefully I can get this for you, is that you end up, it's like you don't have to put the colour into the centre. You could do it that the, the white goes into the centre. It Actually, no. If you're going to do that, I'm confusing the issue now, this, this pattern with the this colour here, with the background extra piece, is for the colours to go into the centre. 
if you wanted it so the white was the, your background was going into the center and your color was here instead of putting a color a, a background one on you would put a a colored one on okay I, that probably confused this issue but make this one first and then you can play with it but when you put them together so if i try and put this together for you like that you end up with like secondary buzz saws imagine this was a, a complete you know more than one block you end up with secondary buzz saws as well here okay in your background hopefully that makes sense <laughs> so yeah have a play with it um mess around with your your orders as well you know change the colorways and all maybe mix and match them and see what you can come up with and please post them as always i do like seeing your blocks so post them if you uh if you have a go at it okay any other questions there drew uh no jean says looking forward to uh, playing with the colors won't see you oh. wednesday as i've got a hospital appointment oh take care lovely hope everything's okay uh that's about it cool cool fabulous um lovely so that's the buzz saw all over and done with i will see you tomorrow at uh one o'clock sorry it wasn't the time i was thinking what am i doing with the crochet with the crisscross um congratulations again to sandra for her winning the uh the applique templates we'll get those out to you later on today and or tomorrow i'm not sure we've got to go and do some filming in the shop for her chanda in a minute um because we're back on again on sunday um so yeah that's it we'll see you tomorrow at one o'clock uh, stay safe, stay home everybody, hopefully you're all okay, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye guys.